In a galaxy far, far away. There was a booster box called Spark of Rebellion. And it was a Star Wars TCG newly released by FFG. Anyway, we have Star Wars Unlimited, the Spark of Rebellion. And uh, yeah, this is due out release on Friday. And uh, made by FFG, Fantasy Flight Games. Now, for those that don't know Fantasy Flight, uh, Fantasy Flight is a massive, 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 massive uh, board game creator. And um, if, for those that don't know, they actually started off publishing comics. Or I think they were European comics in America. So that was how they first sort of started out. And then they brought out a game called Twilight Imperium. Now, if you remember, if you've ever seen Twilight Imperium, it is a board game that takes you all day to play <laughs> literally all day if you if your book if you're going to play twilight imperium you've got a book out the whole day to play it but they're one of the largest publishers of board games in the in the world and uh, they've made some amazing games like descent uh there's star wars twilight uh, star wars um there was a descent version of that as well they've made a bunch of living card games in the recent years uh, lord of the rings included marvel champions so they've got a huge huge um, sort of rotor of, of decent board games that that have been out over the years. And there was a time when FFG was the top, top, top publisher of board games and anything that they brought out, people would be really, really excited for. But today, we're looking at Star Wars Unlimited, the t the new TCG, which is out on Friday. We're going to have a little look through the cards, have a look through some of the distribution of rares, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts at the end of it, and we're going to talk about exactly what I thought about this um, this new TCG that's come out. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is I, I, had, I do not know how to play this game, so we're going to be looking at the cards purely on an aesthetic level. And, um, yeah, I haven't had time to learn, learn to play the game yet. It is something I probably will do. I did play the original Star Wars game back in the early 2000s that was made by Richard Garfield, who uh, famously made Magic the Gathering as well. That one didn't seem to go anywhere. Although, looking at some of these cards and looking at some of the um, uh, like the actions of them and stuff, it does look a little bit similar to how that played. But we'll, we'll have a quick flick through some of these um, commons. And there's a lot of commons in every, every pack, by the way, guys. I've only actually opened one box so far. Um... And I'll show you what I pulled out of that box as well at the end. But I just thought we'd have a quick flick through the first couple of packs on the commons. Show you kind of what the, the card frames are like. What the artwork looks like. And um, just kind of the style of it really. And as you can see the the text is sometimes at the top and sometimes at the bottom. I'm not entirely sure if that's like a mechanical reason or whether it's just like an art style choice. But as you can see the uh, the artwork is all kind of hand drawn. They haven't used, um, you know, stock images from the movies or TV shows and stuff like that. Uh, this is our first uncommon. So, by the way, guys, all of those cards you just saw, all commons. I think you get three uncommons. Uh, this is the forces with me. We've got Outmaneuver with a Millennium Falcon down there being chased by two TIE Fighters. And our first rare is a Search Your Feelings. Search your deck for a card and draw it. So, uh, potentially a pretty good card, that one, actually. And our hollow is right at the back. And this is Bright Hope. This is an uncommon hollow. So basically, every, as far as I can tell, every card in the set can be a holographic uh, variant. And uh, it's at the back of the pack. Now, I've seen some damage on these cards. Uh, if you see just here, there is kind of some whitening on the right-hand side there. But I've seen much more egregious examples if you have a look here as well, just in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little nick down there as well. So um, having the chase card at the back is possibly a bad thing. Uh, in fact, I, I'd, I'd even go a little bit further than that. I'd say it's quite a bad thing. Uh, I've seen some pretty bad damage on the back of these packs. And uh, let's just have a look here, see if we can see any. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on that card, to be fair. But I've seen quite a, quite a, quite a lot of them. Now... This one here, this is your leader card. So the first card that you flip over is a leader. The chase cards, from what I understand, will be in this slot. Uh, so as soon as you flip the pack over, uh, the big chase card is the showcase leader cards. And I actually managed to pull one 
out of yesterday's box. I'll show you that at the end. Uh, but yeah, we managed to pull a leader card. Alternate art. I think they're called showcase uh, showcases in Star Wars, uh, and they're kind of double sided. They're very very cool. I will I will show you them. Um, but as far as I can tell, those are what the chases are. Uh, there are some. You can, obviously you can get hollow legendaries and you can get hollow rares and stuff. So that is another thing that people can chase. That's a pretty cool card, the fallen lightsaber. And some of these, like this, is like a extended art style card, right? And this is just a rare. I don't know why some of them are extended arts and then some of them are not. Uh, like this rare, for example, uh, is not a extended art. This is an upgrade. This is an event card. Not, I'm assuming this is some sort of spell, and this is like a artifact type thing if you play Magic. Um, so yeah, there you go. Oh, we've got two rares in that pack. See, this is something I don't understand, right? I've I've noticed that sometimes you get more than one rare in a pack. I'm not entirely sure why, because behind that as well, we should have a a hollow as well. It's very very odd, guys. I really don't understand what the pack distribution is we'll fly through these a little bit quicker now now that you've seen some of the commons i mean there are so many commons in a pack guys uh let me just quickly show you very quickly so you've got uh you've got your common leader there now do you know what i did see that someone had sold one of these on ebay for 30 quid i just don't see that a common uh boba fett is going to reach that sort of price um so please be please be careful out there guys uh when you're looking at prices it's really really tough to tell what exactly is going to be happening here uh, with these prices and and actually how hard it is to pull a Boba Fett leader even though it's a common you only get one leader per pack so does that make them more rare than you know than your average common that you seem to get an absolute huge 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 amount of fights for freedom devotion and we've got a rare base there we go deal three damage to a damaged non-leader unit and wow, that's a pretty nice looking card. That is our hollow. And we've got the advanced TIE Fighter. See like some of these cards are really nice. Like this this extended art, you know, with the hollow on it, very, very cool. But it is just an uncommon. So why does this uncommon have extended art? And then some of the rares do not. I'm not really too sure. Maybe this maybe these some of these have already been answered. Uh, and I'm just not aware of the of the answers. <laughs> but um yeah, maybe maybe that could just be what it is. But anyway, we've got Green Squadron A-Wing. So we've had what, three commons, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then look, even this common's got an extended art as well. Uh, but we've had 11 commons in that pack. That's, really, that's, a, that's a huge amount of cards, guys. We've got an uncommon attack pattern delta. Uh, we've got Benthic two tubes. The Inferno four. Uh, Regional Governor. That's our rare of the pack, followed by a common swoop racer hollow. So yeah, let me let me know what you guys think of Star Wars Unlimited. Have you opened any packs yet? Are you, are you planning to open any packs? Are you looking to get any um, any booster boxes yourself? Are you looking to play the game? What is going to be your involvement with this TCG? Are you looking to just collect it because you're a Star Wars fanatic? Uh, I'm me personally. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I, I appreciate the the world building behind it and that you know the universe that it's set in excuse the pun universe kind of thing but you know it's um i'm not huge i'm not huge on it i don't really know all the characters names and that sort of stuff like canon canon jarrus never heard of him <laughs> but again another another uncommon extended art uh which is quite interesting now here we go this is our first legendary card as you can see down here in the bottom right we've got those l's and these are uh legendaries these are the rarest cards in the set. Presumably these will be the most powerful as well. Uh, this one, take control of a non-leader unit. At the start of the regroup phase, its owner takes control of it. So presumably uh, you can you know, attack with them, stuff like that. So pretty cool. Uh, we've got our leader. We'll put our, our lead, uh, not leaders, sorry, our legendaries down there. We've got a volunteer soldier, another hollow common. Let's see where we can uh, get. And as you can see, guys, the, the uh, packs are actually made of paper as well. Um, there we go, Director Krennic. Now this is one of the showcase ones that you can get. Uh, probably not the greatest one. I don't know who Director Krennic is, so uh, no idea. Some, a lot of the cards, um, not a lot of the cards, but like the bases and the leaders seem to be double-sided as well. Um, 
But yeah, we'll flick through these pretty quickly. As you can see, like there is such a lot of commons, and I'm pretty sure we've seen some of these multiple times already. Cartel Spacer, Mon Mothma. We've got a rare Admiral Akbar. And uh, we've got a hollow common right there, Steadfast Battalion. So what do you guys think of the cards? What do you think of the artwork? What do you think of the framework? Um, I think, you know, this could be quite a good uh, game for players. It looks like there's a lot of thought going into, um, you know, the, the mechanics and stuff. And how, you know, there's bases and um, units, leaders... Uh, you've got events, which I'm pretty sure are probably just spells. But uh, there's, it looks like there's a lot going on in this game. A lot to kind of, uh, you know, grab hold of. Defeat any number of upgrades on a unit. Pretty cool. Uh, we've got another uncommon. We've got a wing leader. I do love an X-Wing, though. The yeah, X-Wing is one of the best spaceships ever made. We've got a rare base energy conversion lab. Uh, not double-sided, either. And we have a, another shiny common. So yeah, you seem to get quite a lot of, of shiny uh, common hollows. And um, let's have a look what we've got in here. We've got a Chewbacca. There is the other side of him. Capital City base. Uh, well, you can also get rares in the front sections of these as well, by the way, guys. You can get rare leaders as well. So you can get some chase cards at the front. Now, I'd be interested to see if the leaders end up fetching a price. And I think really... That will really be based on um, how many people end up playing the game. I know that FFG have been running some tournaments and stuff. Uh, and there's been some pre-releases at LGSs as well. So, that, I mean, that's quite a nice looking card. Nice little extended art. Uh, we've got a rare wolf from Gladiators. And we have a uh, distant patroller. Now, this again, this is just a, another uncommon hollow. But a really nice artwork and... Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty cool one. I quite like that one. Moving on swiftly, though. I'm just going to flip through these commons even quicker now, guys, just to try and get them out of the way. Uh, oh, here we go. We've got a rare... So this is a rare leader. Uh, Iden Versio. So there we go. A rare leader. This is the thing. You, you kind of have to flip through all of the cards, right? Because you you can see rares in just kind of weird places. I got a bit confused what way that was supposed to be up there. Uh, but you get, you can you can get some you can get cards in some kind of odd odd places. Sometimes you get two at the back of a pack, sometimes you get one at the front of a pack. I just have no idea what the distribution is. It's kind of been really confusing. We've got Jabba the Hutt. Oh, that's cool. I've not seen that one before. Nice little Jabba the Hutt rare there. <laughs> and um, we've got a full hollow Sabine Wren. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Can we get another showcase? Apparently, the showcases are supposed to be one in every 12 boxes, which is about one in every 288 packs. Now, uh, I believe there's a, quite a few leaders. I think there's like five or six to get. So if you're looking for a specific leader, it could be that if there is five uh, showcase ones to get, then your pack will be coming up every 1,500 packs, which potentially means that specific leaders can be pretty rare in their showcase form. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens with those because presume oh, we've got another rare fallen lightsaber. Uh, last time we had that though, we had two in a pack, so we didn't get that this time. We've got the Corellian Firefighter Hollow there, common. Uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens to the leaders, and I think you know the showcase ones could be picked up by wider Star Wars collectors, right? Um, they could be quite they could be quite expensive just because Star Wars is a pretty big IP. But I think a lot of that's going to be dependent on how many people actually, you know, play the game. Um, this seems to be like a big player's game to me. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a huge uh, collector's game uh, at, at any rate. Here we go. We've got another rare there. Smoke and Cinders. And, oh, that's a pretty cool one. I like that. Moment of Peace. We've got Yoda there. This is only a common, but uh, it's a nice hollow one. Pretty cool card. Again, I don't know how hard it is to pull a specific uh, hollow common. I mean, there's obviously you only get one in every pack. There is 252 cards in the set. I don't know if that's including uh, secret rares or if there are secret rares uh, at all. Or whether everything has kind of been revealed. I'm not really too sure, to be honest. Uh, but let's see. We'll get through to some. We've got Rogue Operative. We've got Rugged Survivors Bosk. 
Uh, hard point, heavy blaster. What is that? That's no good to me dead. I'm not entirely sure that, that is artwork of. Uh, we've got another, oh nice, we've got a legendary Luke Skywalker, I've not pulled that one yet, that would be a nice one to pull in Hollow, I think. Uh, and we have a uh, common tactical advantage. But yeah, nice little uh, Luke Skywalker legendary card there. I mean, some of these, some, uh, the Luke Skywalker for example, that's the first time I've seen a Luke Skywalker card in this. I mean, obviously I've only opened one box uh, prior to this. So I'm not entirely sure how rare the legendaries are. I mean, it seems like you get maybe three or four in a box. Um, at least that's what happened last time. So they could be pretty rare. Uh, well, I say pretty rare, but they could be harder to pull than uh, mythics are in magic. <laughs> we'll put it that way. Uh, I've got cannon. We've got a bombing run right there. That's our first rare of the pack into a common Vanguard infantry. All right, let's kind of speed this up a little bit. We'll get through the commons pretty quickly. We've got a common there, another common there. And up to the... I mean, there's just so many commons in these packs, guys. It's absolutely insane. Right, uncommon. Another one. Another one. We've got Saw Guerrero right there. And the Outer Rim Headhunter. Full hollow common in the back. All right. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this, uh, this new TCG. Um, let me know what you if you're going to be buying any of it. You're going to be collecting it. You're going to be playing it. I think I think most people that are going to be uh, going for this are going to be trying to play the game. Uh, this looks to me like a very very player heavy game, uh, as opposed to being collectible as such. Uh, we've got a general Krell rare right there. Oh, nice! Now that that's a good hit. We've got a legendary hollow mace window. Very very cool. Very, very cool. Look at that. What an absolute banger of a hit that is. Let's put that one in a sleeve, shall we? A legendary mace window. Now, in the, in the last box, I didn't pull a single uh, hollow legendary card. Um, so, doesn't look like you're supposed to get one of those in every box, at least. But that's a pretty cool pull. Quite happy with that one. What else have we got? Oh, here we go. We've got a rare Han Solo leader right there. Uh, yeah, there's the leader card. There we go. Double-sided. Uh, we've got a common administrator's tower. We'll skip through these. Uh, there we go. We've got an uncommon, uh, uncommon, <laughs> uncommon Admiral Piet. Uh, we've got a false throw uncommon. Callan Jarrus. We've seen him like three or four times. A uh, body rook is our rare... And we have a Rallying Cry Uncommon Hollow right there. Uh, all right, we've not got too many packs, guys. Let's have a look and see how many we've got left. I think we've got like five or six. Uh, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we've got eight. It takes quite a while to get through these packs as well, right? I think, I think that's because there's so many Uncommons in a pack. Uh, possibly that will be changed in the future. We've got another rare leader right there. Cool, cool, cool. They could be quite. Uh, those, those could, those could share some value. I think depending on how playable some of them are. I mean, obviously some of the leaders are going to be more meta than the rest of them. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens to those rare leaders as well. Because as you can see, we've we've not pulled a huge huge number of those uh, out of this box so far. We've got a rare chopper right there into a Lieutenant Childson. That's a pretty nice looking uh, hollow. All right, moving on. Nothing too crazy in that pack. Uh, I think the craziest card we've had is the legendary Hollow Mace Windu. Um, it could be that that is the craziest hit in the pack. That in the in, sorry, in the box that we get. Uh, hopefully, we get something else that's a little bit nice. I would like to see another showcase, but it seems very unlikely that we will get one of those. Uh, we've got a Zeb right there. We've got an Obi Wan Kenobi. Now I did pull this in full hollow out of the box yesterday, so uh, and I think I've already got this in non hollow as well. Um, there we go. We've got the Tie Fighter there, full hollow Tie Fighter common. Moving swiftly on, let's go. We've got oh, we've got another rare. We've got Grand Inquisitor, another rare leader. Uh, shut my mouth. It seems that they are coming through a little bit thicker and faster. I definitely didn't have as many of those in the last uh, in the last box. So it could be that the distribution on those is just completely random. 
Uh, I had no choice. Uh, first rare of the pack and a mining guild TIE Fighter. Can we get a showcase? That would be pretty cool. Uh, here we go. Moving swiftly on. Let's just cut out a bunch of cards. There we go. Those are uncommons. <laughs> on to the uncommon. We've got a false choke. I did get this in hollow as well, which is pretty cool. Seeing Darth Vader in, in a full hollow uh, card. We've got Bendu. Units in this arena can't attack your non-sentinel units or your base. So I think that's like a blocker, basically, isn't it? Uh, and we have an Admiral Akbar full hollow rare. So the full hollow rares, I imagine, are pretty good. Uh, they seem to be pretty hard to get. I mean, as you can see throughout the majority of this box, we've been pulling uh, hollow commons and hollow uncommons mostly. Um, I think we've had a couple of rares and maybe one legendary. Uh... Or maybe a couple of rares and one legendary. The one legendary is definitely. I would have noticed if we'd got more than one uh, prior to Mace Windu. We've got a false lightning there with uh, Emperor Palpatine right at the bottom. Doing his false lightning. That's a legendary card. Put that in our legendary pile. And we've got the Imperial Interceptor. All right. We've not got many packs left, guys. Not many packs. Then we'll do a final thoughts. What do I think of Spark of Rebellion? Uh, what do you think of Spark Rebellion? Let me know in the comments. I've asked you a few times and you still haven't put a comment in there. So I can see, you know, I can see, guys, you haven't put a comment down there. So let me know what you guys are thinking. Let me know what you guys uh, are intending to do with Star Wars. Are you just going to be uh, admiring it from afar? We've got another legendary. A legendary command. Uh, choose two in any order. Give two experience tokens to a unit. A friendly unit deals damage equal to its power. Uh, put this event in play as a resource and return a unit from your discard pile to your hand. So it looks like it's got uh, quite the uh, utility. We've got another full hollow rare. All right, we're getting full hollow rares, guys. Left, right, and center. I did say that they were they were pretty hard to get, but it turns out they are not. So we've got an Emperor Palpatine rare leader right there. Very cool. Uh, chopper base, partisan fleet. Tactical Consular Mission Swoop Racer Cell Block Guard. We've got the last few packs, guys, and then we're going to go through what I think of it, what I think the longevity of it will be. We've got a K uh, two S O a rare, and we've got a Consular Security Force. And the last pack, guys, could this be the pack? Could this be the pack? And we don't have a showcase, unfortunately. No showcase for me. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cards in these boxes. You only get 24 packs, but boy, do you get a lot of cards in each pack. Uh, we've got a Camp Dooku there. Very cool. And a full hollow boss to close it out. So there you go, guys. That is what a box of Star Wars, uh, Spark of Rebellion looks like. Let me know what you guys think. Personally, I think this is going to be a massive players game, right? The, the cards, to be perfectly honest with you, when I first saw the frames... I was absolutely horrified at the way these cards look. But I think it's just because I was a little bit shocked to begin with because um, they are different to what other frames kind of look like. But now that I've opened up some cards, right, I do kind of feel like they've grown on me. Like That, that, that Luke Skywalker card is pretty cool. And it's all original artwork as well, guys. And they've all used, you know, the characters uh, from the films. I mean, you know, that's very clearly Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, that is very clearly, you know, the guy that plays Count Doku. I forget his name now. You have to uh, remind me. Uh, Luke Skywalker, you know, Mark Hamilton. Um, yeah, so I think in terms of the artwork, the artwork is cool. I think it's good that they've used original artwork and they've not done like the Weiss Schwartz thing where they just take screen grabs from shows and films and that sort of stuff. But in terms of opening a box... I don't think there is a lot of excitement when you're actually opening the boxes, right? Uh, you know, unless you open a showcase, that's that's as exciting as it can probably get. Um, but when you're just looking at these hollows, they're just kind of the... Well, they are the same cards as the cards in the set, but just holographic. Obviously, people are going to be chasing these uh, full, full hollow lead, uh, legendaries. I keep calling them leaders. These are legendaries. And possibly even some of the rare... Uh, leaders as well now i think the su success of this game is now going to be based upon uh who is 
playing the game. If you're playing the game, if it has a really, really booming player base, then people are definitely going to be chasing these rare leaders, even some of these max rarity. Uh, I mean, I say max rarity, right? But, you know, like hollow, hollow legendaries. Now, this is the other thing, is that the reason why I said max rarity is because there doesn't really seem to be a max rarity in this set, in, in this, well, in this TCG at the moment. Uh, it could be that it's just in this set and they look to improve in the future, which may well be the case. Um, but this kind of looks very run-of-the-mill to me, just a little bit like Lorcana. Uh, I found the Lorcana cards very, very underwhelming and didn't really didn't really appreciate them uh, as much as kind of what the hype of the market has kind of created over it. Now, in terms of a showcase, this is what a showcase looks like. Actually, let me take it out of the uh, shield very quickly and out of the sleeve. I will show you what a showcase looks like. So this is the showcase Chewbacca that I pulled out of yesterday's box. Now these, like I said, are supposed to be two, uh, sorry, one in every uh, 12 boxes or two cases, which is 288 packs. So uh, quite rare. Now, I don't know how many um, le uh, alternate art leaders or showcase leaders there are. I think there's like five or six. So let let's just say that there's five. Uh, if it's 288 packs per uh, per showcase leader then maybe trying to pull this Chewbacca would probably be in like the 1 in 1500 range um, early pricing on this particular card I've seen a couple of stores have it up for 500 and there is a uh, I think there's one eBay listing in America that has it up for like 400 so I'd be interested to see if people go for those sorts of prices very 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 expensive um, and, you know, don't get me wrong, very, very lucky to pull one of these as well. Especially just out of, out of one box, just to kind of see what it was like. But yeah, are those prices going to reach reach those heights? Will they go even higher? I mean, it's... The the other leaders, I, from what I've seen, the other leaders, there's a Princess Leia, um, and there's a couple of not-so-great ones. So I think uh, Boba Fett's one of them. That might be quite a good one to pull. But I think this Chewbacca might be one of the best ones. Uh, it's got Han Solo in the background as well, as you can see. Um, so very, 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 very cool card in terms of Star Wars lore. Now, is one of these every 12 boxes enough to keep people opening and opening and opening them? I'm just not too sure. There isn't any like special full arts like you get in Pokemon or uh, even in One Piece. You know, you get those alternate art cards which are textured and stuff. I'm not too sure why FFG went down the route of not making huge kind of flashy cards um not even super flashy you know even just even just kind of sr variants like one piece or you know they don't need to be textured like the full arts in pokemon are but i was hoping that maybe there would be a little bit more to it than just trying to chase a holographic mace windu or uh you know like a showcase chewbacca don't get me wrong this is a very very cool card i really do like this i'm probably going to get this one graded um, but in the greater scheme of things, I think this is going to be a player's game, guys. I don't think this is really a collector's, investor's type market. Maybe it is in 20 years' time if this game is still around then. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, one thing I will say, guys, is that FFG do know how to make a card game, right? They've made loads of living card games. You've got, uh, like I said earlier, Lord of the Rings. There was uh, Spider-Man. No, sorry, not Spider-Man. Marvel Champions. They've done Arkham Horror. Uh, they've done a whole load of living card games. They know how to make a card game, guys. That is for sure. So if there's anything to be said about this, I've not played this game, but I would say that it probably will be a good game, right? I will give this a try and give it a play and, and then maybe report back on that. And um, it's possible that I'll eat my words. But FFG are, make, are good at making games. It's what they do. They're not here to, you know, just create collectible cards, for example. I'm assuming they want to jump on the hype like, like everybody else has. Um... But, you know, like Pokemon, for example, Pokemon aren't, they aren't good at making card games. You know, they make, they make an IP, they make branding. Uh, they're not even good, that good at making video games. But FFG are. FFG might not be making good at, might not be very good at making cards, but they might be good at making the game. So that, that's where, it, that's where I think it will really kind of um, uh, excel. Hopefully people pick it up. Hopefully people do play it. Hopefully people do start chasing these, these, um, Showcase Chewbacca's mainly because I've got one. But <laughs> uh, other than that, though, the card quality is okay. Uh, they're a little bit... They they feel a little bit thin. 
Uh, but it's, it's pretty nice overall. I would say some, some of the cards do come out of the packs damaged. Um, oh, well, damaged is maybe a little bit of a... Um, exaggeration but you can i think it doesn't help that all of the cards are black backed as well all the way around so you can see every single little white nick um i've only noticed that on a few cards though so maybe that's something that could be improved in the future i do like paper booster packs though i do like these they're so easy to open uh, but that's just a minor thing but yeah let me know what you think in the comments guys what do you think of uh, the chase format in in this tcg uh are you going to be playing it? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you've already learned to play it, if you're going to be attending any release events and that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, leave us a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks folks so much for watching. If you're new, subscribe here. And we've got some uh, loads of videos coming up, loads of content coming up. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.